Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome to another Shoot in the Poop. This is number six. We've got a lot of new faces today, so let me just preface this by saying that this series of videos, well, is a bit of a dumping ground. I don't consider these formal videos. I'm much more slack in the content, flow, editing, that sort of thing. It's a collection of snippets that really don't have their own place in life, and arguably probably shouldn't have even been filmed in the first place. But I did, so here you have them. I'll timestamp them down below in the description, but I hope you find something you like in my little party mix here. You in the back there? Mind getting those lights? Thanks. I realize guns have become quite the controversial topic these days, but unfortunately, on the old Tony homestead here, we've got a bit of a situation with our defenses. The cocking lever on my boy's elite 2x4 is jammed. I'm going to try to fix it so we can all get back to having our morning coffee in peace. Personally, I don't have much time on a weapon like this. More of a single shot revolver kind of guy. But this chick magnet right here has a clever trick up its sleeves, and is the reason I'm even sharing this with you. You see, this thing, when it worked, and hopefully I can fix and demonstrate, shoots two darts at a time. Like you load eight, and it'll only shoot two every time you pull the trigger. That in itself, shooting two darts at a time, might not sound so surprising. It wouldn't be hard to imagine some sort of shuttle, some plastic part that simply cycles through all the barrels as you cock it, sending air to just two of the darts at a time. But alas, my friends, that's not what it does. This thing here will send air and shoot two darts no matter where you put them. As often happens in the heat of battle, you may stuff your darts in any old barrel. This thing will still only shoot two darts no matter where they are, and always more or less to the same distance. It's not like it's losing air out of a barrel without a dart installed. Somehow, the darn thing knows where they're loaded. Now this thing is purely mechanical. There's no batteries or electronics in this whatsoever. So it must have some sort of mechanism in here with mechanical logic that decides where there's a dart and where there isn't, where to send air and where not to send air. And of course, I've always been curious to know how they did that in a plastic thing that retails for, I don't know, about $20. Frankly, I haven't cared enough to actually break it down to see how they do it. I mean, give me some credit, would you? I haven't lost all my marbles just yet, but seeing as it needs fixing, thought I'd have a peek. I'm really hoping this is just a series of linkages in here, but all these screws, yeah, it's never a good sign. I'm starting to get a very clockworky vibe from this thing. That's always good. Jesus. It's got dual air cylinders. I don't know if I would have expected that, but it's fine. So this is how you cock the gun. That looks like it still would want to move. Missing some teeth there. They don't look like they're broken. Maybe that's like an over-travel thing. Now, if you cock this and brought it forward, I guess it lets the pinion spin if it needs to when it fires. 
this is the part I'm interested in. There appears to be like porting in here. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. It's covered in some kind of slime. I want to try to figure out what jammed this cocking mechanism. There's the power plant. There's not much there. Those move okay. I'm guessing it's in here somewhere. That doesn't move much, so I think that's our problem. It's still loaded somehow. There's some kind of lock up at the front. What releases that lock? Okay, so these hooks look like they pull the springs back and cock the air cylinders until they get to this point. It's essentially like the sear or the trigger mechanism. And then the trigger releases them, firing the gun. So this must keep the gun from cocking again until it's fired. Maybe it wasn't getting all the stroke it needed, or maybe some feature broke off of one of these pistons that tripped this and allowed the gun to be cocked. So that's what it was doing when it wasn't working. I'm gonna to start to build this back up and maybe the problem becomes apparent. Before I try to put this together, let's see if I can't irreversibly damage this uh, selector valve thing. Now ain't that something. Well, it looks like we got ourselves some valves here. That valve is closed unless there's a dart in that position. It's had a spring up behind it. All right, so that only lets air into that barrel if there's a dart installed. I'm with them so far. There's more room around that spring than it technically needs to only do that function. I'm thinking this seals in two directions. So I'm sitting here wondering to myself why this thing doesn't shoot all four darts at the same time. Quite clever. Let's say there's three darts installed in the bottom and not at the top. The air can't get through the top because the valve's not in the right position. It's closed off the barrel because there's no dart there. So it snakes through there and goes down to number two, which is open, so it fires that dart. Can't get down to three and four because air hasn't been ported there yet, well, because the dart was keeping this valve open. Once this is fired, then air can sneak its way down to three, etc., all the way down. So if you only had one side loaded and the other side empty, well, I guess air from number two cylinder can't get out anywhere. I don't imagine it gets pushed over to the first side, otherwise the darts, I guess, would go further, right? Yeah, I suppose it's just slowly bled out. I think here you can sort of imagine the air path. Air comes in behind dart one. If the valve is closed, it looks like it sneaks past that little divot there down into dart two chamber. If that's closed, it sneaks out through this port to three. And if that's closed, Why isn't there another port there? My bad, they've got some 3D flow path going on here. You can see the air can move in front to back across the sort of the volume of the valve so it can get to all four. Genius. That whole cascading effect happens in the span of one, two, three, four parts. I mean, more than four parts, but these are all the same. That's a nice little cascading valve mechanism. We've gone this far. I might as well see this through. I don't want anybody accusing me of being a tease. Each of these appear to be a single part. I mean, they're the mirror opposite of each other, but they're a single part each. This couldn't have been easy to mold. It's got the two halves, just like we saw in the last video. In addition, it's got some cores that come in from both sides to create the barrels, sort of all the features in the back. What I can't figure out is what these holes are for. Each part has them. There's three in barrel one, one in barrel two, and three and four are closed. You know what I'm thinking here? And mind you, I'm totally talking out my I'm wondering if these things aren't to balance the pressure across all four barrels. We have this valving system down here. I gotta imagine it's much easier for air to get right to barrel number one, a little harder to make its way down to barrel number two, and nigh impossible to get down to three and four. I mean, look how much geometry the air needs to snake through. So the whole power plant and the gun must be sized for darts three and four, I guess dart four. And since that would give more power to one and two, they vented the barrels? If I trusted my kids not to shoot each other in the face, I'd be really tempted to seal those holes up. Maybe a quick shot of hot glue or some tape or something. I don't know. Somebody really put some thought into this thing. Probably Nerf. All right, I'm happy. Let me get this thing back together. The 
the fit between these parts is just ludicrous. I hope that's right. Thought I was going to forget this part, didn't you? Fortunately, these screws are all different lengths. So if anybody out there needs a screw for their uh, Nerf Elite 2x4, hit me up because they gave me an extra one with mine. All right, moment of truth. Sounds promising. Nothing left to do but try it out. Just to show you what that valving system does, I'm going to take out every other dart staggered across both sides. Keep a close eye on those. All right, I think I can chalk that up as fixed. Can anyone guess what's inside these two empty boxes? Correct, they are panel meters. I bought these back when I was rebuilding the power supply for the CNC router. I didn't install them then because that's just the way things go. These are both DC meters. They show volts and amps. I think they're both rated to 100 volt and 100 amp. Now this one's just voltage and amperage, and if I'm not mistaken, this one also did like power and energy and that kind of stuff. I got them both on Amazon. There are sort of a lot of styles to pick from. Both of these were less than $20. Well, I mean, they were close, like 18, 19, 20 bucks, somewhere in there. I think they're made in the USA, but my Greek's a little rusty. Correction, the small one is good to 50 amps, and this bigger one, the physically bigger one, is good to 100 amps. I'm going to install this small one because I'm not too worried about all that other power and energy info. And I like the way this one looks. The boxes come with everything you need except a CNC router, and they include these large shunt resistors. Not to be confused with stunt resistors, which are a lot more fun to work with. Now, I don't know my head from my elbow. These things only measure voltage, so to get a current reading, they measure the voltage drop across a known resistance and use Ohm's law to do the math. To restate that explicitly, the current meter in this is built for a specific shunt resistance. So when it measures the voltage across that, V equals IR, so I, the current, is the voltage it's measuring over that shunt resistance value. I'll save this one for some other project. I'm going to install this one right between the power supply you may have seen in the power supply video and the stepper motor and their drives. So this is just going to be reading the voltage and the current the drives are using and not everything else on the machine, like lights and relays and solenoids and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully it's just an inexpensive way to keep an eye on the health of the electronics running the router. And there it is. Now hold on before anyone starts complaining that they're not getting their money's worth. That thing was dead simple to put in. It took me longer to cut a square hole in the plexiglass than it did to actually wire it. If you decide to do this, I'm sure yours will have come with a wiring diagram. But for this one, I just had to break the negative leg on the power supply and install the shunt. And then it was just two more wires. One from the positive leg and the other one to one side of the shunt to take the voltage reading to get the current measurement. We're about to turn this on for the first time. Voltage I'm expecting I think was 67 volts. That's what was calculated and measured in the power supply video. Current I'm not exactly sure what to expect. I believe I have these drives wired for 6 amps, but I'm using geckos. I don't know if all drives do this, but the geckos do some kind of hocus pocus where they reduce the standby current. Like if the machine's not doing anything, it's not sending full current to the steppers, I think anyway. Plus the current to the steppers I don't think is the same as the current to the drives because I'm sure it's doing some voltage games there. Anyway, see what it looks like. Now, aren't those colors quite festive? 63, 64 volts, wasn't expecting that. And it looks like almost one amp standby current. You try to jog around some of the axes and see what those numbers look like. All right, well, I just enabled Mach 4. And that jumped up to one and a half amps. I've also got a different MPG. I've had this for a little while. It's a Mach, iMach 3. A lot better than that wireless one I had before. Anyway, I'm gonna spin the X axis, see what those numbers look like. So 
So two, two and a half amps. Let's see Y axis. This is a little bit heavier. And Z is the lightest. Okay, a little bit of a voltage drop. Current seems, I don't know what it seems like, but that's now a baseline for me. I can't move multiple axes with this MPG simultaneously. I don't really feel like firing up a program. And this control box with this panel here is on the other side of my machine than the computer and the keyboard. So I think I'm just gonna keep an eye on that, you know, as CNC projects come and go. See how those numbers behave and use that as sort of a barometer of how the electronics are doing. A little more insight at any rate. Oh, and by the way, the uh, bleed down time of that big capacitor. It's faster than how much time it would take me to get into the enclosure and pose any danger to myself. On second thought, why not try to put it through its paces? I've sent the router off on a bit of a roller coaster ride. And yes, I had to model a roller coaster in 3D CAD. Down to every last nut and bolt, in fact. It's doing simultaneous X, Y, and Z moves. No cutting, of course, but to try to make up for that, I've floored it. This router is currently tuned for top speeds of about 150 inches per minute. That's about 4,000 millimeters per minute. The real-time feed rate display in Mach 4 shows a top speed of almost that, about 140. That's 3,500 millimeters per minute. Now, I'm sure the current is doing all sorts of zany stuff, but my little display here catches a peak of almost 4.5 amps. Specifically during one particular part of the G-code, what I like to call dead man's treacherous turn. Can't be sure because it happened a little fast, but I think I saw the spindle go a little green around the gills and almost lose some coolant there. I just copied and pasted the code and the router looped through it, I don't know, probably 20 minutes plus the time, you know, to film one more cycle of it. 25 minutes, let's call it half an hour. The numbers always looked about the same on the display. Again, the numbers themselves don't mean too much to me right now, but as I watch them, as I cut other parts, if I see them start to stray from what I expect, it might be a hint of bad things to come. All right, so I think that's all I've got for you this time. Maybe you found something in there that you liked. As always, thanks for watching.